Hi, I'm Nate Ulrich, Browns beat writer for the Akron Beacon Journal, alongside our columnist uh, Jason Lloyd. Uh, we're here at First Energy Stadium. The Browns just lost 23-10 to to the Miami Dolphins. It's a ninth consecutive season opening loss for the Browns. They are now 1-14 in season openers since 1999. Jason, are the Browns who we thought they were? I mean, we saw kind of some weaknesses and we saw some strengths that we thought we might. Yeah, the... The biggest, I guess, question that we take out of this is what do you do along, across the offensive line, particularly right guard with O'Neal Cousins and some of the problems he had. Chud said after the game he's the best we have, which makes you go, oh, was it four penalties at final count? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's inexcusable for your starting offensive line, for a starting offensive lineman, and that's, that's got to be corrected first and foremost. And the guy right next to him, right tackle Mitchell Schwartz, a second-round pick from last year, was tormented all day. I mean, you got an all-pro uh, defensive end in Cameron Wake. You know he's going to make plays, but two and a half sacks, six quarterback hits. The Dolphins, uh, as a team, compiled six sacks and 16 quarterback hits. Brandon Whedon uh, was moving around. <laughs> for his life. Moving around all day and, and moving around slowly in the locker room and just, you know, He's okay, but, you know, that takes a toll on you, and he said he's never been hit that much before. So Brandon Whedon had a really rough game, but he didn't get any support from the offensive line and his receivers, a bunch of drops, a couple of which, you know, went off guys' hands and were picked off. Yeah, this wasn't the offense that we saw in the preseason. This wasn't the offense I think a lot of people were expected to see. You know, I commented that, you know, I expected to see Brandon, when they are throwing the ball in the shotgun and throwing it down the field, and that, that wasn't the case. And part of the reason for that is what he said, he didn't have any time. Uh, but, you know... Offensively, Trent Richardson touched the ball 13 carries today, none in the fourth quarter. To me, that's inexcusable. I mean, I understand, you know, the Miami went up late, mid to late in the quarter, but he's the best player on offense. And to not get the ball in his hands in the fourth quarter, you know, he's carrying the ball 13 times and Brandon's throwing it 50 plus times. There's something wrong with it. Yeah, that's not the recipe for success. And defensively, I think we saw a strong front seven that had four sacks and a lot of pressure, and we thought that that would happen. The secondary. Played okay, but folded and showed its weaknesses, its lack of depth, and, uh, you know, basically down the stretch, kind of bottled up the Dolphins for, you know, the first half, only surrendered two field goals. Then third quarter, Ryan Tannehill, Tannehill hooks up with uh, Glen Oak High School graduate from Northeast Ohio, Brian Hartline, for a 34-yard touchdown. And then they march 85 yards for a real back-breaking touchdown drive in the fourth quarter. Yeah, but ultimately, I mean, well, first of all, I'll give credit to Joe Hayden for the job he did on Mike Wallace. He shouted him all over the field, and, and Mike Wallace, a big free agent signing for the Dolphins, was a complete non-factor. In this and game. frustrated after the game. Absolutely. But in, in this defense held them to 20 rushing yards. If you hold a team to 20 yards yeah. rushing, you got to win that game. Now, DeQuell Jackson afterwards said, no team can run on us, which I kind of thought, okay, well, Ray Rice is coming in next week, and Adrian Peterson's, you know, up the week after that. So. Yeah. Great job by the Browns' front seven. They were fantastic today, but let's hold off. Let's wait until Ray Rice and Adrian Peterson get a hold of this defense before we really make a final assessment on, on where they are right now. And frankly, you know, it doesn't matter if a team can't run on you in this league necessarily. If you have Buster Screen and Chris Owens who are right. going to be for, you know, big plays and, and, and teams are able to, to march down the field, and I think that's what you saw with Ryan Tannehill. He picked them apart when it mattered most despite a good effort early on by the defense. Anyway, uh, you know, the Browns, unfortunately uh, for them and their fans, just take new, a bye next year on the first yeah. week and just start over on the week two. What I was going to say is new, new regime, new coaching staff, but same result. Um, we'll talk to you next week, though, and we'll see what happens uh, in Baltimore.